Hey everyone, my name is Brad and I vlog in the name investing doc. Today's post, we're going to talk about the financial and emotional implications of the pandemic on doctors. It's going to be a little bit different today since a little bit strapped from time since this uh, week was a little busy. So follow along with me. All right, I'm here in the office. So picking up a bunch of items today that I have to take to storage because we've run out of space in the clinic, which is a good problem to have, but we've only been here just over a year. So we'll talk a little bit about the emotional and financial implications of the pandemic over the past two years, and it's had on a lot of doctors. All right, so I'm done dropping everything off. Um, I basically had to move because there were people using drugs next to our old storage place. But uh, let's head back to the house and we'll talk more about today's vlog book. All right, I'm back in the office. I'd like to reflect and take a look back over the last two years and think about the financial and emotional implications that this has had on a lot of physicians in the industry. You may have heard a lot of the terms thrown around, emotional fatigue, compassion fatigue, burnout, a lot of physicians have been stressed, including financially and emotionally. So today I wanted to talk a little bit more about what has that effect been on my panel and my clinic here. I now know three personal friends that have quit medicine and have moved on to other things. One person is now in pharmaceutical industry and two took a coding boot class and uh, now works in the tech industry. A big part of that drive was the pandemic. And although they were happy with their jobs necessarily beforehand, a lot of the things that kind of started bubbling up during the pandemic led them to just say, forget it, I'm done with medicine. The first reason is emotional punching bag. So I will say that there's a lot of physicians out there that feel like being a doctor is not necessarily just practicing medicine, but also to some degree now customer service. And being an emotional punching bag to patients has been difficult at times. There's a lot of wonderful patients out there, but it's always that 1% that really sticks with you. And I think getting yelled at, getting told that maybe you're not doing your job great, getting told that you need to drop everything to see you know, their minor complaint, I think that that's tough for a lot of physicians. It's not that we don't care about that problem. It's just that there was a flood of patients in light of the pandemic and becoming an emotional punching bag for patients getting yelled at, cussed at, physically threatened, or even physically abused, just crossed the line for a lot of physicians. I mean, I personally look back over the last two years and I can think of I mean, it was almost a daily occurrence getting yelled at for why do I have to wear a mask, getting threats about why are y'all guys giving out the vaccine, which is all fake news and whatever propaganda they were trying to spew out. We just wanted to help people. And here we were getting yelled at, getting calls, voicemails, cussed at, you know, F you, whatever. It just, uh, I could see how it really would burn people out. And that was definitely a low moment in the pandemic. Let's talk a little bit about the financial implications of the pandemic for a lot of physicians. There's a lot of physicians that with the emotional punching bag and that type of abuse that they have taken just decided to either skip shifts or, or scale back on time. I even look at my own schedule and I went from working eight or nine hour days on direct patient care to saying, no, I'm done doing that many hours. I'm going to work seven or six hour days. So I did actually take a little bit of a financial hit than I was expecting because I just emotionally didn't have it in me to get yelled at potentially throughout an eight or nine hour day and come home and spend time with my wife and kids. So yeah, even I took some time off or I scaled back, which made me make less money than I was expecting just because I wanted to avoid burnout and didn't want to end up like my friends who decided to just say, screw it, I quit medicine completely. So I think the untold financial implications of the pandemic beyond that drop in visits that everyone saw at the beginning of the pandemic when everything went on lockdown was there's a lot of physicians that have went part time or scaled back hours significantly, which has definitely hurt their income. One of the untold parts of the pandemic is that not only did I feel like a physician during the pandemic, but I often felt like a therapist during the pandemic. And although I married a therapist and I like talking about the non pharmacological aspect of depression and anxiety treatments, Having a patient come in and treat them for diabetes and spend half the visit, three quarters of the visit, not only trying to convince them about the diabetes that they need to get it under control, but to sit there and, you know, basically be their therapist and talk to them about it's going to be okay. We'll all get through this together for 20 visits every single day for two years in a row. 
honestly, it got a little bit exhausting at times. And I can see why a lot of therapists, they need their own mental health break because it gets exhausting trying to build other people up all the time. Even though it's what I love to do, it's tough doing it every single day, all day. I felt a really difficult part of the pandemic was that every single easy visit that was a blood pressure follow-up or travel vaccine, all of a sudden that blood pressure follow-up turned into, well, I think I'm just anxious because I'm in a doctor's office and I don't want to get COVID. And by the way, I'm not sleeping and I'm drinking six beers a day and you know whatever it may be. We all saw it in our patient panel that a lot of people, you know, uh, self-medicated or dealt with things in their own way, and, and they got through the pandemic the way that they had to get through at that time. But I think that was exhausting going from just these easy blood pressure follow-ups saying, okay, blood pressure's high, let's just double the dose of your medicine, to saying, oh, your blood pressure's high, and oh, okay, um, we got to talk about the severe anxiety and spend 25 minutes talking about that. So just like one of my previous posts talked about, where did all the easy visits go? Definitely the emotional toll has been tough, not only on patients, but on physicians as well. The next one that I'd like to talk about is healthcare hero. You may have heard this term thrown around quite a bit in the literature and news, wherever. A lot of nurses or a lot of hospitals started actually posting this like on the side of their hospital saying healthcare heroes work here. And I got to say, I think about halfway through the pandemic, I started getting a little bit a resentment around the healthcare hero. I sure didn't feel like a healthcare hero when I'm talking to Blue Cross Blue Shield or Cigna or Humana or United, whichever insurance company, and they're sitting there denying my claim saying, well, the place of service was two office, for example, but now we want to change to, I think, 11, which is telemedicine for these virtual visits. And we never got any notification of that. The only way we found out is when they started denying our claims saying, no, we're not paying this claim. So we would then not get paid for that visit for months down the road because they all of a sudden changed the rules without telling us, or at least without sending out some sort of wide email informing us of that. It also sure felt like a slap in the face when in 2022, and now it looks like for 2023, the uh, MedPAC, the group that talks about how much raise doctors should get or Medicare should go up for the subsequent year, when they're saying there should be absolute no raises for the next year. Kind of feels like someone's patting you on the back saying, good job, you're a hero, but now we're not going to pay you anymore with inflation. You put your life on the line, but mm, no bonus, no inflation, no nothing. I think that that was a really tough pill to swallow, saying that everyone was basically acting like we were healthcare heroes, putting our lives on the line, and no one was backing it up. And when I say no one, I mean insurance companies or Medicare. No one was backing it up by seemingly make my life any easier by submitting these codes, because my biller then has to go through and figure out why all of a sudden is one insurance company not paying on this claim when they were paying out perfectly for six months in a row? I think this kind of leads into another topic that a lot of people told me, well, you know, you signed up for this. You're a physician. You should be comfortable seeing sick patients. And I am comfortable seeing sick patients, but what I did not sign up for is getting yelled at, getting threatened. Never in my wildest dream would I imagine that I'd have to file a restraining order against a patient when they physically threatened my life and changed all of their social media posts to a picture of a gun, started calling our office, laughing, um, saying they're gonna get us. That's not what I signed up for. You know, that's all for just me giving out the vaccine and trying to help during the pandemic. No, I didn't sign up to give my life threatened to try to give out the vaccine. I did not sign up for that. The other thing that I or my entire team didn't sign up for is getting verbally abused, getting yelled at when we had, during the peaks of the pandemic, when we were getting 500 calls a day and we normally maybe get 100 calls a day, why aren't you guys answering the phones? Why can't you help me? You guys suck. You know, whatever they were telling us. And, um, you know, we would tell them, look, it's the pandemic. These, this is absolute peak. We're getting five, 10 times, 20 times our normal daily call volume asking for help. We only have so much bandwidth. We're doing the best we can. And, uh, and that is very hard to manage, those ebbs and flows. I get that patients are sick. Patients are vulnerable. We want to help out as many patients as we can. And I don't want this post to come off as necessarily whining about the pandemic. It's just that when people tell me, oh, you signed up for this. No, I didn't sign up for verbal abuse. I didn't sign up for physical abuse. And I think a lot of professions are, are feeling this. I have a couple of airline flight attendants that tell me they didn't sign up to get verbally abused on, on flights. And, you know, I feel the exact same way. So I do think that it's exciting that things are heading back to normal now. And I think part of that is, is 
those individuals that really were verbally or physically abusing us, well, the physical abuse, we filed, you know, a, a civil case against them. And um, we actually did press charges. And then things feel like they are heading more and more back to normal as we started terminating relationships against those patients that were just calling us yelling F words all the time. Look, we're here to help you and cussing in my front staff. That's not necessarily going to get the job done any faster. It will get my attention. That's for sure. However, you know, I only have so much bandwidth and we're trying to help as many people as we can to stay as healthy and happy as possible. So I think as we look forward, I think that I have definitely taken a harder stance on verbal abuse. And when someone calls in, we now send them a letter saying, hey, we get that you're sick, we get that you're vulnerable, but calling in, cussing at our staff, yelling at our staff, unacceptable. And that won't be tolerated in the future. So I hope you guys enjoyed the post today. I'll post a little bit more about kind of uh, the practice and a little bit behind the scenes of the practice. I just wanted this to be a little bit of a entry level post and kind of almost venting about how things have definitely been a tough two years for a lot of people in medicine, but it's starting to look like there's definitely good times ahead. So hope you all have a nice day. The next post, I'd like to talk a little bit about more back to the financial post. So it'll be about the financial implications and what happens if there's some huge financial issues such as fraud that occur on your account. So stay tuned for that one.